Gopal brother, can you tell me? His word. Huh? His word. His? Word. His word. Very good. Okay, then any other thing? What Jesus called as? Morning star. Very good. Okay. Bright morning star. Bright morning star. Good. Then uh, was he uh, home brother? Tell me. Uh, first, uh, first like, he was a first creation. Very good. Very good. Wonderful. First creation. of Good. Then uh, among all the angels, uh, what was Jesus? Chiefest of all. Yes, chiefest of all. Very good. So, what was the name given in the Bible? Archangel. Very good. Archangel. So, what is the name given to Jesus? Archangel? Home brother, what is the name? Very good. Michael. Michael. Very good. Okay. What is the meaning of Michael? Make means image, hell means God. Very image good. God. So image of God. So, so Jesus was given a special title. So we see that Jesus uh, had uh, so much of, uh, uh, you see, glory uh, when he was with the Father. And uh, after the resurrection, after proving faithfulness to God uh, until his death, uh, he is now in the divine nature. Okay. So, uh, how did this uh, concept of Trinity uh, came into the, uh, you see, uh, the Christianity, you can see, dear brethren? Actually, this was not there in the Christianity until 325 AD. It is only after 325 AD that this concept of a father and the son being the one came into Christianity. So, uh, actually, if you see this uh, concept of uh, three gods, is actually prevailing in, in all the religions of this world. And uh, Satan, you see, is a, a very cunning a foe uh, and is got uh, used to it uh, uh, to prove that our God is not only one, but is multiple gods. So he has done the same thing uh, in uh, Japan. <clears throat> Japan, they worship uh, uh, the three-headed divinity called as San Po Fo. And India, they worship the uh, three in one God called as Trimurti. You see? And uh, anyone in the Babylon, the Persian, the Egyptians and all these things and all, they have the same uh, concept. So therefore, you see, uh, the Satan uh, tried to bring the same concept of uh, three gods uh, which were prevailing the, all over the world uh, just to divert the real uh, uh, Christians from the truth. Uh, you see, about the concept of trinity in the uh, which was not there in the bible into christianity into the churches therefore if you say uh, they try to prove this christianity uh, about uh, trinity in various ways apart from the scriptures originally this uh, debate actually uh, came inside the church in 325 ad how actually there were two bishops at that time that means uh, two main uh, brethren who were there uh, uh, very strong in the truth at the time, that is Athanasius and Arius. And there actually a debate uh, arised uh, among both his uh, uh, bishops, uh, Athanasius and Arius, saying that uh, uh, father and the uh, uh, son are the one and the same. So Athanasius claimed that the, both the father and the Jesus are one and the same, and the father is Jesus, Jesus is the father. And uh, Arius uh, uh, did not agree to this one, and Arian, Arius. Uh, stood against it as per the scriptures uh, he claimed that uh, a father is separate and a son is uh, separate and Jesus is separate but uh, this one caused a huge turmoil in the society in the Roman Empire at that time and that is the time that the Roman Emperor saw that his uh, stability that his government stability was uh, slowly uh, you see, uh, getting uh, weak and weak. And that is the time that uh, he organized a council uh, where all the, uh, these points were discussed and debated a very a lot uh, in a lengthy manner. And that is the time that uh, uh, many people uh, supported the theory of Athanasius. Why? Because many people who came into Christianity at that time, they never read the Bible. They never had the Bible knowledge at all. Bible was not even printed during that time. So they were only 
few copies in the manuscript form. So, so Bible was not uh, well available to everybody. So that time what happened? The people unknowingly supported, uh, you see, uh, Athanasius theory that the father and son are the same. And uh, uh, not many were with uh, Arius. Uh, that the king saw that uh, as not many were with Arius, uh, if he supported the minority, it would be very uh, dangerous situation for the stability of his government. And that is the time that he gave a, uh, and uh, support to uh, Athanasius. Uh, uh, 325 AD. And that is the time that uh, father and the son uh, concept came into the uh, church. That the father and the son uh, and the same. <clears throat> that was not trinity but uh, a uh, dunity. A due means uh, two. So, so that is the time that uh, this concept uh, uh, came into Christianity. And after that one you said you have the uh, in 381 AD, again a debate uh, uh, arised that was in the Const uh, Council of Constantinople. There, they began to claim that uh, a father and the son are the one and the same. So similarly, the Holy Spirit is also God. That is the first time then the, in 381 AD, uh, Trinity concept uh, came into the church. Uh, that is, uh, since then, a uh, father, son and the Holy Spirit were considered as one and the same. But after this one, you saw, you said, yeah, but then this uh, did not stop here only. In 431 AD, in Council of Ephesus, they began to claim that uh, if uh, Jesus is God, if Jesus' father is God, then Jesus' mother also should be God. And that is the time that uh, you see uh, slowly what happened. The concept of uh, Mother Mary being God also came into the church. That is a uh, Way we see that Mother Mary is uh, venerated today as worshipped as a God herself. So since then, quadranity came into the church. Dear brother, if you see, all these things were led to a great confusion during those days. And not many people could understand how this uh, uh, three in one are there. So then uh, they began to prove this one in various ways. They used to uh, put uh, huge statues or make uh, huge uh, paintings where uh, uh, used to be there used to be uh, three head uh, you see with one body and all the three heads were the uh, uh, same uh, to look at uh, like a zeroscopy but uh, uh, in different uh, slightly changes in the ages uh, or uh, they used to uh, make a painting with the uh, three persons sitting next to each other but everybody are the same alike like a triple acting film you see uh, first person is very old person full of white hairs, full uh, beard and mustache and all full of white. And he was uh, called as the father. And in between, uh, Jesus was sitting. Same, same alike person, but with a uh, uh, little bit, uh, you see, black hairs, uh, a little bit of medium age. And he was called as Jesus, the son. And after him, a very young person with all the same features, same to look like, uh, you see. And he was called as the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, still some people, you see, they used to uh, do uh, paintings in such a way that it was having only one body with uh, three head, right? you see? So three head, but only four leg. Right? Then uh, people used to question, no, why, why? Only four leg, three persons means six legs should be there, no? Huh? They said, no, this is Trinity. One body, three head, right? then four leg. Why two legs are missing? Means Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit doesn't have leg. Hmm? That is the way... You see, they used to pictureize uh, this uh, treaty concept. Uh, so actually, if you see the brain, the Bible doesn't say so, and Bible doesn't give the picture of a alien to our God. Uh, you see, our God is a holy God, and all these things uh, who tries to put uh, various identities uh, just to uh, you see deceive people. It is actually done by smugglers or thieves uh, these days. Uh, in the passport, you see, each and every nation they go, they have different names and all. But then, but uh, Bible is very open. It is the truth uh, that is recorded in the Bible. Therefore, but then these are all are not uh, there in the scriptures, and they try to prove the Trinity apart from the Bible. You see, like uh, egg, one egg but three layers. Trinity chair with at least minimum chair three legs. So one chair but three legs. Cycle, a two wheel, and a central pre wheel. Three wheels are there, but only one cycle. And the water, water is just in form of a 
a gas, solid, and water. So it, it is only one water now. Uh, appearing in three different forms, uh, sun, uh, power, energy, light, uh, you see. So, uh, sun, only one sun. So, this is how uh, they try to prove unity, but uh, nothing was given as a proof uh, from the Bible. Dear brother, if you see in the Bible, Jewish people rejected Messiah. And did God leave them? No, God punished them. You see, uh, similarly today, the Christians are doing a great mistake in only holding uh, to Jesus. And they left the Father. Well, again, will God forgive us? No. We require two things to gain eternal life. What are the two things? Let us read 2 John verse 9, brother. 2 John verse 9. Gopal, brother, home brother, are you there? 2 John. Yes, brother. Uh, verse 9, brother. This is only one chapter. Whatsoever transgressor. In the doctrine of Christ, that not God, neither the Bible in the doctrine of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son. See, he that abided in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. So, this is the doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Christ means what? We should be having both the Father and the Son. Not that the, both the Father and Son are one and the same. You see, Father and Son means what? So, both are there. Otherwise, why the term will be used? You see, even though this is the doctrine of Christ. So, read John 17.3. Home brother, are you there? John 17.3, can you read? Yes, ma'am. John 17.3. John. Gospel of John, brother. 17.3, brother. And this is the this is life eternal that they might know the uh, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom has sent. Okay, this is eternal life uh, that they may know the Jesus uh, and uh, you see the Father. Uh, you see the both the persons. Uh, we need to have this both the persons to have eternal life, dear brethren. So, dear brethren, this uh, differentiation we need to understand uh, clearly. Okay. Like, for example, you see, today what everybody do is that uh, they pray everything to Jesus sir, and say, ah, Oh, Father Jesus, Oh, Father, Father, Oh, Father Jesus, Oh, Lord Jesus, everything. They mix everything and say, either asked, I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Now, how can this one be, you see? Praying to Jesus in the name of Jesus, is it correct? No, dear brother. No. You see, there is a procedure for prayer. We are going to see that subject of prayer also in the coming days. But uh, what does the Bible say? Jesus said, ask in my name. You see, ask in my name and the Father shall grant you. So, we need to approach the Father in prayer in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Not uh, Jesus in the name of Jesus, sir. Read, brother. John 15, 16, brother. John 15, 16. John 15, 16. Huh. Yeah, they have chosen me, but I ordained you, and that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. See, whatsoever you ask of the Father, in my name. So you need to ask the Father in whose name? In my name. So if you ask the Father in my name, Jesus said, you will grant it. He never said that you ask me in my name, I will grant it. It's like you say, uh, like uh, writing a letter to Ramesh huh? in the uh, name of Lata. Okay? No, no. If it reaches uh, Ramesh, you see, then only Ramesh will read it. But if uh, Letter is written from Lata uh, to, you see, Ramo. And if it reaches uh, Ramesh, will Ramesh read it? No, he would never read it because it is not in his name. You see, the letter is not addressed itself to his name. So how will that uh, a prayer ever reach to God? You see, therefore, if our prayers are to reach to God, we need to pray. Huh? See, Jesus, how did he pray? Huh? What did the Jesus taught us to pray? A father which art in heaven. He never said, Oh Lord, who is in front of me? 
Did he say that word? No. Father, which art in heaven, dear brethren. Therefore, this is the prayer we need to pray. What did Jesus pray in Garden of Gethsemane? Huh? Father, if it be thy will, uh, he prayed. Uh, if Jesus himself followed God, to whom did he pray? And moreover, uh, on the cross, what did Jesus say? Huh? Eli, Eli, Lama? Huh? Tell me. Eli, Eli, Lama? Sabakhatani. Mm, Sabakhatani. That means what? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If Jesus himself were God, what is he doing? Double acting. That you have forsaken me. This uh, differentiation we need to understand clearly. And uh, before ascending to heaven, what did he say to Mary? I have not yet ascended to my God and to your God. And to my father and your father. Read John chapter 20, verse 17. Brother. Go for brother, read. John 20, verse 17. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. Mm, see, I ascend to my God and your God. Then my father and who father are? Your father. So both are having a common father, sir. You see, Jesus also, you see, dear brethren, he also, huh? Add the same uh, trust on the same father. Uh, therefore, if you have the same father, then what does Jesus become to us? Uh? Huh? Jesus actually becomes an elder brother to us. Read. Read it in the Bible. Uh, Hebrews. Hebrews 2.11, brother. Hebrews 2.11. For both he, he that sanctified and the, they who are sanctified are all of one, for which causes he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Yeah, he is not ashamed to call us brethren. So Jesus is our elder brother. There is nothing wrong and shame in Jesus calling us as a brethren. Therefore, this uh, differentiation we need to understand. Okay. So uh, how we can uh, test up? Whether the Trinity is generally there uh, prevailing in this world or not, if you see of the realm, you see, there is a test you can do. You see, what is the test? Uh, it is given in the Bible. Let us read First John 4, chapter, brother. First John 4, chapter, verses 1, 2, and 3, brother. Beloved, believe not every spirit. First John 4, chapter, 1, 2, and 3, brother. Believe, believe, it. believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they are of God. As many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the place is of God. Ah, see, spirit. what did John say? Don't believe every spirit, sir. That means don't believe every doctrine. Because there are many false prophets who have gone into the world. What is the test that? We need to test it. How do you test it? Every spirit, every doctrine that believes that Jesus Christ come in the flesh. You say today, what the Christians claim? Christians would say, Jesus himself was God. God himself came in the flesh and died for us. Does he say that one? No, this was, what does he say? If any spirit believes that Jesus Christ has come in the, you see, flesh, that is the Real uh, spirit of God. Read again, brother. Read again clearly, loudly. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby, knowing the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every mm. spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and that if this is that spirit of Antichrist, hmm. whereof you have heard that hmm. it should come, and even now already is it so? Ah, that is the spirit of Antichrist. So be careful. That is not the, you see, dear brethren, the same spirit. That is the spirit of Antichrist. So whosoever doesn't believe that Jesus came in the flesh, it is the spirit of Antichrist. We are going to study Antichrist in the coming classes, dear brethren. So what does the Bible say about Antichrist? So we need to be very careful. 
whether we believe in the truth or not dear brother and therefore actually you see you can do one more test you can give the bible to any neutral person who doesn't believe in uh, christianity or anybody any new person who coming to the knowledge of christ just give to the complete bible lock them in the room tell them to read the bible completely after they are reading the bible once they come out from the room just ask them some simple question ask them who is god who is father ask them who is son who is jesus ask them who is the holy spirit they will clearly tell that god is almighty god and jesus is his son and holy spirit it is a power from god they will clearly tell you brethren there is no confusion at all you brethren but uh, this confusion has today risen because of the false teachings in the christianity this clearly proves you see that uh, these things uh, came into existence in the church during uh, 325 ad therefore we need to understand uh, this uh, clear uh, uh, differentiation between uh, uh, jesus uh, you see and uh, uh, heavenly father both are not one and the same uh, ashish brother i think gopal brother uh, uh, network is gone just uh, try can I try to call him okay so this one we need to understand uh, uh, actually if you see na uh, we have also read the bible uh, when we read the bible do we really get this idea that uh, the existence of trinity in the bible no nobody gets this idea dear brother this all came into picture during the dark ages when during a uh, 325 ad when all these false things uh, came and crept into the church slowly then only all these things uh, uh, came uh, okay let us wait for uh, uh, gopal two minutes ha uh, oh brother we'll wait two minutes okay continue okay so how this uh, uh, concept of trinity uh, came into existence we just saw dear brother actually uh, the word you see uh for almighty god for god the word actually used in the bible is uh, in the hebrew it comes as uh, el shaddai or elohim actually this is used in a plural form for god just to give respect okay so uh, these terms are used actually uh, the name of god in hebrew is actually y h w h there is no vowels in this word sir to spell it out in the original bible the word that comes in the original bible is y h w h okay there is no vowels in these words to pronounce it we know it very well that english if there is no vowels we can't pronounce a word okay so uh, the what does this uh, y h w h signify if you see in the bible uh, y h w h means uh, uh, uh he that is uh, alive for ever and ever the one who is immortal i am that i am the same thing was asked by moses let us read uh, exodus 3 14 exodus 3:14 can you read exodus 3:14 brother ah uh, gopal brother can you read sure brother Hmm. Exodus three fourteen and God said unto Moses, I am that I am, and He said, The salt thou say unto the the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Hmm, that was uh, that is actually meaning of I am that I am. Y H W H means I am that I am. Actually, you see now read uh, Genesis uh, Exodus six three brother. <coughs> Exodus six three. Exodus six three, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Ah, this is the first time the word Jehovah comes in the Bible. Okay, now how did this word Jehovah actually came? Okay, actually the Greek, the Hebrew word is Y H W H. so as they are not in, able to pronounce it 
for sake of a pronunciation this words a and e were added in between y and w like for example you can see in that uh, screen you see y h w h is there so after y they added a y a h w e h so it become yahweh yawa so as a pronunciation change in various languages you see the word jehova actually came into existence so this is how in our bible the word jehova came into picture so uh, why it is not there in the bible if you see in the english bible they have removed all the appearances of jehova except in a few cases okay now why they have removed it because god gave 10 commandments okay in the 10 commandments one of the commandment is that you shall not take the name of the lord god in vain so the christians feared that uh, without their knowledge they might be misusing the name of god hence uh, that word jehovah was totally removed many places in the bible and instead of that one god was put in the bible like for example see the differentiation between uh, jehovah and jesus in the old testament can be clearly identified you see in the old testament for god uh, capital g capital o capital d that is mentioned in the old testament or else uh, capital g small o or small d is mentioned but whenever it comes to jesus in the old testament uh, you see the brethren there uh, l o r d is mentioned that means capital l small o small r and small d is mentioned there is one clear verse we can see that one brother psalm 110 verse 1 brother read brother psalm 110 verse 1 brother psalm 110 home brother can you read or gopal brother can you read sure brother the lord said unto my lord sit thou at my right hand ah. Wait, I brother. make thine enemies thy footstool. Very good. Did you observe the difference between the first lord and the second lord? Yes, brother. See, the first lord is full caps, correct now? Yes, brother. The second lord is small. Capital L. Yes, exact L, everything is small. Yes. So why they are translated actually? Here, Heavenly Father is saying to Jesus. Hence, these two terms. See, this itself is a proof that both not uh, one and the same. So this is how in the Old Testament differentiation can be identified. But when you come to the New Testament, it's more very clear because wherever it is speaking about Heavenly Father, that word G-O-D is mentioned. Capital G, small o, small d. Whenever it comes to Jesus Christ, it is saying as Lord Jesus. Just now we saw now Lord, how? Capital L-O, huh? R, D, small so this is how it's mentioned. So this differentiation actually is there in the Bible. Therefore, this uh, concept uh, we need to understand properly. So, uh, well, uh, so let us not uh, misunderstand uh, that uh, uh, brothers are uh, Jehovah Witnesses. No, we are not Jehovah Witnesses. Okay, Jehovah Witnesses doesn't believe in Jesus at all, dear brother. But we are not Jehovah Witnesses at any point of time. We are followers of Jesus. We believe in Jesus. Okay, we believe in the blood of Jesus. Without Jesus, there is no salvation at all. But only difference what we are trying to say that uh, this concept of the Father and the Son are one and the same. This is nowhere given in the Bible at all. This differentiation has to be properly and clearly identified. So, uh, don't uh, misunderstand the saying that uh, brother don't believe in Jesus. We believe in Jesus. We believe that Jesus is our Lord. And uh, there is nothing wrong in calling Jesus as also God. But uh, to Jesus, even to Jesus, there is a God. And he is the almighty God. That differentiation, we need to understand it very clearly. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. But uh, what is the meaning of Holy Spirit in the Bible, if you see? Holy Spirit is the power of the invisible God. This one we need to understand. So, uh, let us read 1 uh, Corinthians, brother. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Uh, chapter. 
first Corinthians uh, chapter 8. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5 and 6, brother. Huh. But though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, is there be gods many and lords many. But to us there is but one God, the Father, ah. of whom are all things, and we in thee. See? And one what Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. okay, read, 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 brother. Read, brother. Completely read. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. You see? What does he say? For though there be many that are called gods, there are gods in this world, isn't it? They say, no, thousands, thousands of gods are there. Yes, thousands of gods are there. But uh, unto us, how many God is there? How many God is there, brother? Verse 6, what does he say? How many God is there? One God. One God. Home brother, how many God is there? One God in verse ah, 6. One God. Okay. And who is he? He is the Father. And unto us, there is one Lord. And who is it? Who is that one Lord? Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Home brother, who is that one Lord? Jesus Christ. Ah, is Lord Jesus Christ the Father? The, are they both one and the same? Are they both one and the same, oh brother? Different. Huh? Different. Very good, isn't it? So this is clearly shown from this scripture, actually. Uh, have you heard the uh, story of Joseph? Have I told you? The story of Joseph in the Old Testament. Have I told you, brother? Hello, have I told you? No, brother. No, I haven't told you, no? Yes, brother. Okay, good. Okay, let us see. See, Joseph was uh, taken captive to Egypt. We know very well. Okay? But once uh, at the last uh, of his life, uh, he began to interpret the uh, dream of Pharaoh and Pharaoh promoted him to the main and the first uh, important position in the entire kingdom. Everybody was subjected to Joseph except the king. He had given him the entire authority but yet though all authority was given to Joseph, still Joseph was under whom? Huh? He was still under the Pharaoh. Let us read Genesis 41, brother. Uh, Genesis 41, chapter 41, verse 40 to verse 44, brother. Genesis chapter 41, verses 40 to 44. Uh, Gopar, brother, can you read? Genesis 41, 40 to 44. Thou shalt be over my house and... And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. See? What did he say? Huh? You will be great. You see? All my people will be ruled by whom? Not by me, but by you. But only on the throne, I will be greater than you. That means you understand the clarity now. You see? Pharaoh is the superior. He has given all the authority to Joseph. Does it mean that Joseph uh, is uh, higher or equal to Pharaoh? No. He has given the authority. Next, continue with her. Huh? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. All the land of Egypt. All the land of Egypt is given the power. Then. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. And Arried him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Mm. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. See, and which chariot? Second. First chariot or second one? Second. Why second one? Because he's still lower than the Pharaoh. Uh, you see? This is the same way, dear brother, with the Heavenly Father and Jesus. Continue with the next. Uh. And they cried before him, bow the knee 
and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. See, everybody should bow their knee to Joseph. Similarly, no? All knees shall bow, all tongues shall confess that Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Yes, everybody should bow to Jesus. But yet, Jesus is subjected to God. Continue, brother. Huh? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. See, without you, nobody shall lift their hand or foot. Does it mean that uh, even Pharaoh was supposed to ask the permission of Joseph? No. This difference we need to understand clearly, brethren. Though Pharaoh had given entire authority to Joseph, still uh, Joseph was under whose control? Under the control of Pharaoh. Similarly, it is with Jesus. God has given entire authority to whom? Jesus. Does it mean that uh, after obtaining all the authority from God, uh, Jesus is uh, powerful than God? And uh, Jesus is above the God? No, oh, dear brethren. Hey. Yeah? Though he has given all authority, still Jesus is subject to Heavenly Father. Read 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. Home brother, read brother. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. 1 Corinthians 15 chapter. Verse 25, 26, 27, brother. Huh. 25. 25 to 28, 15 chapter, 25 to 28. Hmm. Uh, he must be ridden till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. See? Jesus should rule, really it's himself. He should rule till he puts all enemy. Okay? Now continue with that. Huh? For he hath put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected. See? It is manifest that he is uh, eh, expected. You see, that means uh, father has put all authority under the feet of son. This doesn't mean that father is also under the son. This clearly means father has got exception. He is not uh, under him. It is expected. Uh, you see, accepted. Uh, accepted that uh, he is not under the son. See, clearly now was given. Continue with the next. Uh, which did put all things under him. Hmm. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be, sub be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. See, after Since Jesus... What shall they do? You Thank you, brother. So after, see, what does the verse say? Huh? After Jesus uh, putting all authority, huh? what will happen? It seems sir, at the end of thousand years, sir, Jesus also will be subject to God. He will also be under God, it seems, sir, that uh, God may be all in all. This is the same concept of uh, Joseph and Pharaoh, dear brethren. Though Joseph received the entire authority, he was still under uh, Puma. Under the Pharaoh, he was the second position. Therefore, Jesus, you see, is next to the Father. This differentiation, we need to understand it very clearly. Okay? So, kindly don't misunderstand that we are not putting any things which are not there in the scriptures. Okay? We are not Jehovah Witnesses. If we were Jehovah Witnesses, we would have told you boldly. Why I am raising this point? Because... There are so many people who claim these things. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah? We believe in Christ. Uh, okay, We believe in the Holy Spirit. Uh, we believe in his blood. Uh, without him, uh, we can do nothing. Dear brethren. So, uh, let us uh, read uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, brother. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4. Go for brother. Can you read? Sure, brother. Hmm. Now let me see who is going to answer this question. 
I will ask these questions to three of you. Let me see what the answers you three people give. Read with us. Proverbs 30 verse 4. Correct. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? Hmm. Who is his name and hmm. what is his son's name? If hmm. thou canst tell. Ah, now see what is the question? Let's put the huh? what is his name and what is his son's name. name? If thou can tell. Now you tell me. Now you let us see who is going to answer properly for the first time. What is his name? Jesus Christ. What is his name? Understand the question properly. What? Huh? Wait, wait. I'll, I'll ask you by name. Only those persons should reply. Okay? Understand the question properly. I'm going to repeat it again. What is his name first? And what is his son's name? That means, first, what is the name of the father? And second, what is the name of the son? Now you tell me. I'll ask the question again. What is his name? That means, what is the name of the father? Oh, brother, tell me. Om brother, tell me. Om brother, are you there? Om brother, are you there? Yes, yes. Tell me, brother. What is his name? What is the name of the father? Um. Huh? Loudly, Om brother. In, in this verse? Ah, you tell me what you understand from the subject. You, you heard the subject now, brother. Uh, tell me, know. what is the name of the father? Um, actually, I do not uh, understand that what is his name in, in this from, from this verse. Okay, I'll explain to you. See, this uh, scripture is telling there is a God. Okay? And what is the name of that God? And next, uh, it is saying, there is a son for that God. And what is the name of the son? Okay. You understood the question properly, brother? Did you, did you understand, home, brother? I did. It's um, from, uh, I understand from this. It's like the, the father is like sin, sender, like he sent his son. Correct. And uh, who like ascended like up to into heaven and descended also that uh, the sender is father and uh, the, as, a, as a he as a son he came to the uh, uh, earth and then he again uh, he is in heaven so it like it is uh, it is work for the Jesus Christ I think so so both are uh, Jesus only yeah no, I mean the the, who, the 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 ascended is like the sender is father. No, and... no, no, brother. That, that is not the question. Okay. Now listen. What? Let us see what brother Gopal answers. Then we'll come back to you. Okay. I hope that you'll understand them. Gopal, brother, tell me. You, I hope you understood the question. Yes, brother. No, now tell me. What is the name of the father? Almighty God. Ah, very good. What is the name of the son? Jesus Christ. Jesus, this is the simple answer. Okay, brother, home brother, you, now you got it. Yes. Ah, this is not speaking about who ascended to heaven, who descended to heaven, nothing. Ultimately, what is the question? It is speaking about the creator. Okay? So, who has uh, ascended to heaven or descended to heaven? Nobody knows. We don't know. We know that only Jesus has ascended to heaven. Then, who had gathered the winds in his fist? Do we know? Huh? It is only by God. Only can God hold the winds in his hand. Can we hold the wind in our hand? No. And who had bound the waters in the garment? Huh? Can he bound the waters in the garment? It will leak. But God has done that one. And what is that creator's name? And what is that creator's son's name? That's what he's been asking here. Okay. Home brother, now you understood, no? Clearly? Yes, sir. Uh, now you tell me. Now you answer for this question. What is the name of uh, the creator? Uh, 
Theta is our, our Almighty Father. Almighty Father. Very good, brother. Okay. Now, what is his son's name? What What is his son's name, brother? Um, Jesus Christ. Very good. Why are you so much hesitating to answer this question? It's very simple, no? Correct, no, brother? Good. Okay. Ashish, brother, now you tell me the answer for this question. His name is, for me, I say his name is Jehovah, Jehovah. And his son's name is Jesus Christ. Very good. So simple as that one. Okay. This verse clearly puts a question that there are two persons who are different. And there are two persons having different names. One is Almighty God and uh, other is our Lord, uh, Jesus Christ. So this uh, difference we need to clearly, very specifically understand. Both are not one and the same. Okay. We're just trying to say that both are not one and the same. And uh, Jesus himself has got a God. Okay. Now let us read uh, 1 John, 2nd chapter. 1 John, 2nd chapter. 1 John, 2nd chapter. Uh, one minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. Sorry. 2nd John. 2nd John, chapter 1. Verse 9, 10, 11. 2nd John, 1st chapter, verse 9, 10, 11. How about can you read? Who is over trans transgressed and abides not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God, he that abides in the Doctrine of Christ, he had both the father and the son. Ah, he had both whom, brother? Father and son. Ah, father and son. Are both one and the same? No. no. Right. Are both one and the same, brother? Both are the same. Ah. They both are different or uh, same person? Different. Ah, very good. Very good. Continue with the next. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither be him God's feet. Hmm. For he that rideth him God's feet is partaker of his evil deeds. See, what does the Bible say? If somebody comes uh, preaching any other doctrine claiming that the three persons are one and the same, that the both of father and the one and the same. What does the Bible say? Bible says, don't uh, uh, bring them to your house. Don't welcome them into your house. You see, don't greet them. You see, why? Because if you welcome to the, your house and if you greet them that God bless you, it means that uh, Indirectly, you are supporting their evil doctrines. That uh, you are supporting their false doctrines. Therefore, this uh, differentiation we need to understand uh, clearly. Okay. So, uh, any doubts, any questions, brother? Any doubts, any questions? Till now. Any doubts, any questions? Gopal brother, home brother, any doubts, any questions? No, brother. Okay. So, Next week, we will see about God because time is uh, almost over. So, we need to have at least 45 minutes to one hour to see that subject. We'll see next week. Home brother. Home brother. Are you clear? Um, I have to read again. Okay. 